I think we can start. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the um, 2021 R Consortium Members Meeting. Um, I'm Joe Rickert, um, R Consortium's, um, the R Studio uh, Director from the R Consortium, presently serving as chair. And today um, we have Mark Hornick here, Director of the R Consortium from the Oracle Corporation. Um, Samantha Toit from R Studio, who has been chairing our um, Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and uh, Accessibility Working Group. And behind the scenes, we have Brian Warner and Elisa Trevino, who, have, who are essential to making things run smoothly in the background, <laughs> not only for webinars, but in, for our day-to-day -day business. So um, let's get started. The, um, the format here, uh, here's the agenda for today. We have a, a number of short uh, presentations and short videos, but we're hoping to make this as interactive as possible. Um, you can see on the second slide there that we're trying to leave at least uh, 30 minutes out of that 40 minute final session for open discussion. Uh, but uh, if the discussion happens earlier, that's fine too. So what we'd like to accomplish today, we, we'd like to, uh, first of all, um, tell you what we've been doing recently over the past year, um, and then to show you um, how we're organized and hopefully how we can, um, we can get um, more people uh, engaged in what we're doing. And we'd also like to make sure that we understand, you know, if from our members, if we're on the right track, what you're thinking about um, the value you're getting from participating in the R Consortium, and we're looking for feedback. So this is a members only meeting, and we, we just honestly want to engage and, and, and set our sights on being even better in 2022. So let me start. Um, first off, um, I'll give a little bit of background on both um, the R Consortium and, and some brief history of the milieu, you know, the R um, ecosystem, just to make sure we're all on the same, um, same level of understanding here. Uh, this year, uh, recently, we have had a number of companies join the consortium. You can see the, um, the members down there in the um, left-hand side. Mm -hmm. I believe this is up to date. And uh, we're very happy to have um, a whole bunch of new silver members. Mm -hmm. Our mission, of course, is to support the R Foundation and the R community. And we're all about building infrastructure and helping to ensure that R is around for a long time as a dependable open source project that um, we can all count on. So let me, um, let me talk about the background here. So, our ecosystem, this is kind of like a high level schematic. So first off, we have R becoming an open source project at around 1995. And then soon after we had the appearance of the R core group, the 20 or so people who are responsible for making direct commits to the R language and CRAN, the central repository. Now CRAN, as you know, is um, it's essential to the R ecosystem. There are about 18,000 packages on R. It was a design of the R language, a design feature, that the language itself would be kept small and additions would go through um, uh, this package infrastructure. You know, people would add new capabilities and features to the packages. I believe that the, that decision was um, essential to the formation of the very strong R community. Uh, a community, uh, you know, a real community is something where people self-identify, they have a way to contribute to the community and they have a way to have their contributions recognized. And that's exactly what the, the, the package structure enables. So then we have the R Foundation, the group that is um, responsible, kind of owns the R language and is responsible for the decisions of how it develops. 
Now, we've got the dotted lines here because even from the very beginning, R um, in its structure was never hierarchical. There, there is nobody in charge. There are several groups of contributors. And as things developed, you see, it began as an academic effort. Uh, Bioconductor, which is um, a repository and a project specialized for genomics, spans uh, academia and um, industry. I mean, it's the primary source of um, genetic analysis software used, used almost everywhere. And then the, the R Consortium comes along in 2015. So we've been here five full years. Our focus is uh, to help spread the, the R community to include uh, members of industry and government. But there are many other um, significant contributing organizations, which I represent here by the Our Open Sci Project, which is uh, primarily concerned with, with doing really rigorous um, open science and reporting and building the tools to do that. So that's the, the milieu that we, um, that we work in. The ecosystem is um, highly democratic, People hold wildly divergent um, opinions on how to do things, and yet we're all in it to make progress together. So some quick facts about the consortium. Founded in 2015, we're a nonprofit organized under the Linux uh, Foundation. Well, we um, take in our membership dues and we pay as much of it out directly into, into the community as we can. We've awarded over $1.3 million worth in grants and support, um, um, support money for conferences and the like since we've started. And uh, more than 50% of our income uh, goes to the grants. We're organized this way. Um, so um, we're the board of directors. Uh, we have the ISC, the Infrastructure Steering Committee. It's responsible for uh, the, all of the community awards, the top level projects and the working groups. So uh, top level projects are projects that are so important that we fund on a sustained basis and we allocate funding before we um, allocate funds for our grants program. Working groups are collaborative endeavors that, that you know, open up to the entire community. So um, they're mostly managed by, um, or at least chaperoned by members of uh, the R Consortium, but uh, they're open to everybody. And this has been, um, I think, a remarkable vehicle for cooperation and for growth of the R Consortium. We have a marketing committee, uh, which is there to promote the community. So uh, we'll talk about that later, exactly how we do that. And since we have recently had so many companies, pharma companies joining, we have now a pharma oversight committee, mm -hmm. which is um, responsible for kind of coordinating the activities and strategy of those working groups that are primarily concerned with the pharmaceutical industry. So the organization is important because it shows how you can engage and at different levels. So, you know, the, the committees are open uh, to members of the R consortium, to individuals whose companies are members of the R consortium. The working groups are open to everybody. So here's a... Here's a look at where our spending went in 2020. So you can see that um, directly 50% in, um, in community support and that um, we have community events, which is again, money that goes to support conferences and user groups. So that picks us over 50%. And much of the money that's um, allocated towards marketing is again um, directly promoting uh, community activities. So now uh, what we'll do is um, we're going to talk about some projects. Uh, the organization will be first in terms of what we call technical infrastructure and then we'll we'll look at um, 
our social infrastructure. So please, um, you know, if you'd like to ask a question, uh, put it in chat, or I don't know whether we have a raise your hand feature uh, kind of thing, but whenever you'd like to, um, to interact, uh, let's make this as informal as possible. So the first one we have up here is a DBI. This is a, um, a project that we awarded and I'll ask Mark to say a few words about it. Sure, thanks Joe. Um, so starting with the DBI, this is you know, R's native database interface. And uh, DBI is a package that supports R's native data, database interface definition, uh, providing a common interface across multiple database management systems. And you know, we've highlighted a few of the systems that are represented here. Now, DBI enables our users to have a more consistent way to interact with database software providers. For example, defining a common way to connect to DBMSs, uh, create and run statements, and get results. Um, according to the CRAN logs package, uh, thanks to Gabor Sardi, DBI has been downloaded uh, about two and a half million times since 2015. And the trend, as you see here, is for daily downloads uh, is definitely going in the right direction. So it makes uh, DBI one of the true success stories uh, coming from uh, funding from the R Consortium. It's received four grants over uh, four years, and we're definitely appreciative of the skills of Carol uh, Mueller and uh, Hadley Wickham and the RSIG DB. Uh, next slide, please. So another project, um, you know, the R Consortium has made a multi-year commitment to develop R as a first choice for spatial analytics as well. And the list here starts with simple features, a package uh, SF, which uses the simple feature standards supported by the Open Geospatial Consortium and the International Organization for Standardization to simplify analysis on modern geospatial data. Now, this package alone has had 23 million total downloads uh, since uh, 2016. And you see the downloads for this package over the past few years have grown dramatically. You know, downloads are a reasonable proxy for package adoption, uh, even sometimes of package quality because people are using it. Uh, the STARS project enables the processing of uh, Earth imagery data that's held on servers without the need to download it to local hard drives. And it's seen over 800,000 downloads. So there are many other projects. And if we just jump ahead to uh, 2020, we have the DB interoperability for spatial objects in R. And this project has the goal to make it easier to add support for new database backends. So, and we recognize the contributions starting with the Edzer uh, Favesma and uh, the many team members that introduced SF, STARS, and other projects uh, highlighted here. Uh, next slide, please. And you know, this is a, a book by uh, Dr. Paula Morega. Uh, she authored Geospatial Health Data, uh, Modeling uh, and Visualiz uh, Visualizing with R, INLA, and Shiny. And if you're not familiar with R, INLA, it's a package in R that does approximate Bayesian interface uh, for uh, latent Gaussian models. And of course, we're, we all are familiar with Shiny. So from her university web page, you know, geospatial statistics plays a crucial role in solving challenging problems that arise in a variety of fields, uh, such as epidemiology, uh, ecology, and the environment. And so works such as these illustrate the synergies that are possible due to R. You know, here we have spatial and medical statistics, visualization, and interactive communication all coming together. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Joe. Thank you. So here is a cluster of um, um, projects that we've been funding, um, some of them for a long time, one that's very new. So the R Hub Package Builder is a online package building system that uh, can be used by anyone to build an R package. We are constantly improving it and there is um, current work is trying to get it so that we use exactly the same tests as CRAN. So this involves cooperating with CRAN and little by little we're building trust and able to have some influence in, um, in presenting the views of the community in, in how you know, we think repositories should work. Um, and if you look at the, the last one up there, uh, repositories working group. We have a, um, this is an ex a new effort that's specifically aimed to look, uh, to looking at um, 
what art repositories uh, that are essential to the development of the art ecosystem look like in this new world um, with modern technology and how, sh how can we integrate with what's happening already with CRAN and other repositories without you know, breaking anything and ensuring continuity and, and a solid technical development in the future. The middle bullet there, the R Validation Hub, is, um, is an effort that was started in the pharmaceutical com uh, community um, to validate our packages. So um, we'll have a little video on that in, in a moment. But basically, you know, here's a, um, uh, a group of our users in the pharma companies who want to move off proprietary software, uh, particularly SaaS, and embrace open source software, and they face all kinds of questions. Um, uh, the basic ones, uh, how do we know we can trust open source? So that has been working for about a year. Uh, we, the group has um, a working pay white paper and also software, which I think Andy's gonna talk about in this short film. So my name is Andy Nichols and I'm the lead for an R consortium working group called the R Validation Hub. The R Validation Hub is a collaboration to support the adoption of R within a biopharmaceutical regulatory setting. Essentially what brings us together is that we will work in this uh, pharmaceutical regulatory setting and we are subject to good practice regulations. Um, we all want to use R but there's a lot of unknowns about what it is we need to do to use a language like R to be compliant with the regulations. And then the main technical challenge is that R is not just a language of course it's an ecosystem uh, with varying qualities. You have things like the base language, um, recommended packages, tidyverse, several other really really good uh, good packages. But you also have 15 to 20,000 packages on CRAN that follow varying degrees of good, good practice in their development. And that's where the challenge really lies in our industry. So what we've done is we've pulled together the relevant regulations and our primary output so far has been a, uh, a white paper, uh, which is titled a risk-based approach for assessing our package accuracy within a validated infrastructure. Uh, essentially, what that does is it explains how you might go about performing a virtual audit um, to reduce risk and be compliant. More recently, we've been focused on the tools um, centered around an R package called Risk Metric, which, um, in a nutshell, collates the metrics that can be used to help perform a virtual audit. As a result of uh, what we've done, the several companies are now attempting to implement our white paper. And um, we've recently asked contributing organizations to share their experiences with a view to further refining uh, the guidance that we've put out. In future, we hope to extend our tool set and create uh, an example framework that companies can use to further facilitate the process. Longer term, our aim is to reduce uncertainty and we wanna see R become a mainstream language for um, regulatory work. But in doing so, we're effectively defining and creating standards. We're saying, if you want your package to be used and cited for regulatory work, then this is what we uh, would like you to be doing. Um, and if that further drives consistency across the um, our package developer community, then that can only be a good thing. Thank you very much. So you can learn more about the um... Our validation hub by going to the webpage, which is pharmaR.org. Okay, now the submissions working group. Um, this is again a pharmaceutical uh, oriented working group uh, that is um, on the mission to be able to make all our submissions to the FDA uh, through the gateway. And um, there is a pilot a number of pilot projects going on right now to submit test submissions through the gateway. So this is testing um, both the process of transmitting the, the R submissions, uh, doing it in a way that conforms with the FDA standards, regulations, and security features of the gateway, and 
is also in line with the FDA reviewers who will get these packages and have to unpack them and, um, and work with them. So what you can see here is a, um, on the right hand side is just the notification that on uh, November 22nd, the first submission went through the gateway. So our first test submission, we have a blog post about that down here, which you can find on the R Consortium blog site. And uh, we'll let um, Ning Lang, uh, who in this short video will explain what the group is all about. Hello, everyone. This is Ning Lang from Roche Genentech. Uh, this is Yilong Zhang from Merck. Today, we would like to introduce the R Consortium R Submission Working Group. The R Consortium R Submission Working Group is focused on improving practices of R based clinical trial regulatory submission. To bring an experimental clinical product to market, electronic submission of data, computer programs, and relevant documentation is required by health authority agencies from different countries. Those submissions have been mainly based on the SAS language in the past few years. In recent years, the usage of open source languages, especially the R language, has become very popular in the pharmaceutical industry and research institutions. Although the health authority accepts submissions based on open source languages, sponsors may be hesitant to conduct submissions using those languages due to a lack of working examples. Therefore, in our working group, we decide to provide submission examples based on the R language. Those examples are publicly available on the R Consortium GitHub page. Our first pilot submission focused on providing a submission to FDA using R for analysis and reporting. Specifically, we aim at providing working examples following ECTD specification that include the proprietary R package, R script for analysis, analysis data review guide, and other required ECTD components are provided. The first pilot submission has been successfully submitted to FDA through the electronic submission gateway, and it's currently under review. We will share more information after receiving feedback from the FDA. It was a wonderful that the R submission working group brought together experts from different pharmaceutical companies and regulatory agencies. The main development work of the first pilot submission was close collaboration among Roche, Autorus, and Merck, plus tremendous input from volunteers from 10 additional companies and several volunteers from FDA. For anyone who wants to join the R Consortium R Submission Working Group, please feel free to find more information on the R Consortium webpage or our GitHub organization. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we put out the blog post um, about this uh, earlier this week, and you can see here some of the activity on Reddit. For us, this is like, um, this is about as close to viral as we've ever been. This is getting a lot of attention here. You can see we have over almost um, 4K impressions and uh, people are engaging with it. Uh, same on LinkedIn. Uh, so we have, um, over 5,000 impressions there. You can see the trend in our LinkedIn um, um, activity on the bottom. So this has been, this is something that um, it's gotten a lot of attention worldwide. Uh, in fact, just yesterday, the um, our government um, conference is going on in um, virtually, but centered at DC. And it was mentioned there about this submission. So this is an effort that not only brings a collaboration of pharmaceutical companies in, but with the, the FDA. So we have shown that we, we have, um, we're adding value with this concept of, of being a safe place and effective place to do uh, collaborations. There's another working group uh, that is really down in the weeds, but um, it's about building tables that go into um, regulatory submissions. And I am always delighted when I see the energy and excitement of the folks who are actually doing this. So here we have a short video. I'd like to tell you about the R tables for regulatory submissions working group. First of all, an introduction. My name is Rich and I work at R Studio PVC. I'm also a member of this working group. 
so I know a bit about what's been happening. I'm very much into creating solutions for table generation, and as it turns out, the pharma industry has a strong need for adequate tabulation tooling for the regulatory submissions. That is exactly what this working group meets to discuss every six weeks. We identify needs, try to find common ground, and propose actual work that will someday make the arduous and costly task of generating tables for submissions quite a bit easier and more efficient. Joseph Rickard, a colleague of mine at our studio and the R Community Ambassador for the R Consortium, organizes and leads these meetings. If your role involves table generation and regulatory submissions for the pharma industry, then you might want to join these meetings. If you do, you'll learn what your peers are doing, what they need, and what will be developed insofar as table generation R packages is concerned. We encourage those with interest to contact Joe via email. After that initial email exchange, Joe adds the new member to the invitation list and sends a meeting invite through email. It's all impeccably organized, so thank you, Joe. We meet every six weeks and we use Zoom as the medium of communication. We have a lot going on already, but there's still so much ground to cover. This is important work for an industry that develops a lot of tables. Any efficiency gains and better ways to do things are valuable for them. Thank you for listening. All right, so this, um, this group is making great technical progress. Um, very kind of words from Rich, but all I do is show up at the meetings and, and make sure the video is running. And we have experts there who are um, really digging into the theoretical ideas of you know, what constitutes a table. Um, and how it should be, um, what, what should be structured in order to make the kinds of complicated tables that they use in pharma easy, easy to make and that we can support them well in the R language. So moving right along, we get to the social infrastructure. So, um, it's all about people. And here, Samantha, please take it away. Absolutely. Thank you, Jill. Um, thank you for having me here today. So I'm talking about the people part of the R Consortium, which is the social infrastructure here. I'd say it's made up of four primary groups, which I'll talk about a little bit in more detail. Um, the first is the R User Group Program, um, the R Consortium Marketing Committee, um, and the top level project, the R Consortium uh, Diversity and Inclusion Group. And lastly, but not least, R Ladies, which everyone knows and loves. Um, so I'm gonna dive in a little bit more. Um, and ultimately the goal of all of these groups and the social infrastructure in general is to promote R, the R language around the world and through as many channels as possible. And also to offer support to individuals and groups that may have barriers um, that, that uh, barriers to being part of the global R community. So here's just a snapshot of the R, um, the RUGS program, the R user group program uh, that Joe and the man of the hour today, uh, he also helps to manage as well. Um, and so this is a screenshot from actually a community made app that helps to monitor the meetup API. And so the R user group program it funds different user groups and small conferences throughout the world to cultivate the global R community. Um, yeah. And with these groups, some of these groups um, are from all over the world. Uh, there's about 800, 854 R user groups, um, about 75,000 people that are members of these groups, and that covers 90 different countries. Um, and if you look at the meetup account recently, some new groups that we've got are Tunisia, Algeria, Nigeria, Macedonia, uh, Tbilisi. So it's great to see um, how we're able to expand over the world. Also, obviously with COVID recently, the funding took a bit of a change this year, as opposed to having different vector level funding. We started doing um, funding their different meetup accounts and supporting different ways for folks to organize virtually. Bump to the next slide, please. 
Um, the other uh, way that the uh, social infrastructure of the R Consortium is made up is through the marketing committee. So this is the group that allocates some of those funds that you saw in the great slide that Joe presented earlier to help organize different events, put on different blogs, and promote the work that our users um, throughout our community are doing throughout the world. So you can see there's you know, some conferences that we've recently helped to support, where the R in Medicine conferences, which have been selling out um, all the way. Uh, we also have the R in Pharma conference. Uh, we, some recent ones that we've supported are the CODA conference, which is a data journalism conference in Brazil, and DataFest Tbilisi, which is located in Georgia. And you can see at the bottom is just a snapshot of some of the blog posts that the uh, team has been working on, um, talking about organizing different R user groups from all over the world. And then what are some of the, the top of mind challenges that some of these groups are organizing to, to uh, discuss and to help resolve? Mm -hmm. Next, we've got the Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility Group. And I know it's a mouthful, so you can absolutely call that the R Consortium, R Community Idea. So the goal of this group is to help promote um, and this is that second part of the goal is how to break down those barriers of access that people around the world might have to being part of that larger community. Some things that this group does um, work, is work on guidance for community organizers. So that includes code of conduct guidance, um, code of conduct and diversity program review, meetings together, um, virtual communities events. Um, as many of us transition to an entirely remote community, uh, we offered some guidance on how to correctly have those meetings and create inclusive meetings, in addition to finding some speakers that uh, you might not otherwise be seeing at some of these conferences and help to elevate them to whether it be a keynote level or just to help get speakers that are doing all types of cool things all over the world with everything R. We're also looking about ways to make um, R tools uh, more accessible. So, you know, different ways, whether someone's visually impaired, whether there's just a lot of different barriers that people might not actually be able to use R. Um, both technically and in terms of you know social organization and just supporting the global R community by learning what is top of mind for them. Um, for example, we recently helped Africa R, which is a major community that had a very successful conference um, in getting folks to use R, to use open source data science solutions all throughout their community and really fostering those engagements. Um, and then last but not least, we've got the Our Ladies community, which has been tremendous in cultivating um, the women and non-male R users around the world. Hello all. Here we present a review of the work done by Our Ladies Global in the year 2021. Our Ladies is a worldwide organization that promotes gender diversity in the R community via meetups and mentorship in a friendly and safe environment. The following video summarizes the events and achievements of Our Ladies in 2021. The financial support by the R Consortium provides the technical infrastructure and enables us focus on the community work connecting Our Ladies from around the world, even during a pandemic. Thank you. Hello all. Our Ladies 2021 in numbers. More than 80,000 members from 60 countries around the world organized in 212 chapters, which held 3,640 events. We have more than 118,000 followers on Twitter, more than 1,300 experts at the Art Ladies Directory, 100 international reviewers in our reviewing network, and we produced over 800 documents with teaching materials. Due to the pandemic, we went virtual, producing more than 100 videos in our YouTube channel. They are in five languages and got over 30,000 views and over 4,000 watch hours.
This is all done with 100% volunteer work. Follow us at Our Ladies Global and we are Our Ladies. Our website is ourladies.org. So um, we have um, an example here of one of the conferences that uh, not only do we sponsor this, but this is a our consortium produced conference. Hello, I'm Stefan Kadaki. I'm an assistant professor of pathology and laboratory medicine, and I was the chair of the R Medicine 2020 and 2021 virtual conferences. The mission of the R Medicine Conference and Community is to promote the development and use of R-based tools to improve clinical research and practice. The first R Medicine Conference took place in 2018 as a two-day event on the campus of Yale University with generous financial and organizational support of the R Consortium. And the event featured keynotes and invited talks by R-Stats rock stars like Rob Tipshirani, Max Kuhn, and Mide Chedinkaya Rundle. Fast forward to 2020. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were forced to pivot to a virtual format. We took advantage of this by redoubling our effort to market to an international audience. We also worked to increase our reach by forming partnerships with our educators, underrepresented minority R user groups, and medical professional associations. And as a result of these efforts, we were able to grow almost five-fold compared to the previous year, establishing our medicine as a major international virtual conference. And central themes of the uh, Our Medicine 2020 conference included the COVID-19 pandemic, reproducibility, and using R in clinical trials. In 2021, we continued a trend of steady growth. Participation increased by 13% with representation from 60 separate countries. We almost doubled our revenue due to, uh, due to a number of successful sponsorship agreements, and we tripled the number of pre-conference workshops and also added an interactive poster session. Central themes of our medicine 2021 included algorithmic bias, visualizing clinical data, and putting R into production. We are already actively planning our medicine 2022, which will again be a virtual event, and central topics we are considering include uh, clinical data harmonization and standardization, R and analytics and medical education, and communicating data to non-tech audiences. A major change this year is that we plan to provide continued medical education or CME credit, either for individual workshops or for the entire conference. And in the United States, physicians need to collect CME credit to maintain their licenses. Therefore, by offering CME, we uh, will create a meaningful bridge between analytics and medical education. Finally, and this critically depends on whether we can secure professional organizational support, we would like to offer year-round programming. We have built a network of outstanding R educators who are willing to teach for free if the administrative and event planning work, social media work, and event infrastructure and post-event work are taken care of. If we could offer free R-based educational events with CME credit year-round, utilizing the well-established channels of distribution of the R Consortium, that would really take R Medicine to the next level. And I hope that the R Consortium may consider this idea worthwhile for support and funding. Thank you very much. Hello. So there you see, um some highlights from our technical activities uh, the, and uh, also our social activities, building our social infrastructure that is not only wide ranging, but um, over the past few years has increased in its level of sophistication, um, inclusiveness and professionalism. So at this point, um, we hope to be able to start a discussion now um, it's been 
fairly quiet, but if you've been thinking about anything you'd like to contribute or to, uh, to question any of us on, um, please, we'll start with uh, Mark saying a few words about um, his recent effort to reach out and speak to members. So Mark, please. I'll be happy to, thanks, Joe. Um, so, you know, earlier this year, I had the opportunity to speak to some of our uh, Silver members to get uh, feedback on the R Consortium on a variety of topics. You know, its mission and vision, uh, the community and collaboration, uh, impact uh, the R Consortium has on the community and uh, member and community needs. So we have a, a more detailed set of slides that you can uh, view afterwards with more of the feedback. But I'd like to just share a few of these now, and maybe that will spur some uh, discussion afterward. You know, on the mission and vision, the consensus was that the mission and statement and vision makes a lot of sense, or it was perfect uh, for what the R community needs today. And as you see here, I've included the statement again, just for you to, uh, to view. Now, for the community and collaboration, the welcoming attitude of the R community, drawing on our diverse global community, is viewed as essential for the R Consortium uh, to continue fostering. In fact, the R Consortium should strive to play an even greater role in facilitating uh, this type of collaboration in the community. Now, for uh, our Consortium impact, you've heard many of the accomplishments discussed so far. You know, a few highlights. Uh, from feedback discussions include you know, recognizing the importance of enabling the pharma and biomed communities with projects like the R submissions. Um, you know, Joe already talked about uh, getting acceptability of R for clinical trials, and this is a huge success. Uh, projects like R Hub and R Validation Hub contribute to the overall robustness of the R ecosystem, along with CRAN. And the role that the R Consortium plays to develop the R community through rugs, conference support, and even the blogs from user groups around the world, they were all recognized as adding significant value to the R community. Now, when you think about, you know, what does the member community need? There, I had a, uh, had a lot of feedback uh, on this one, and just a few of the highlights so that, you know, some members would like uh, some assistance with drafting their business investment case for the R Consortium membership. As they have to go through perhaps each year uh, making the request, uh, how, what can we give them to, uh, to support that? Well, you know, part of this need uh, is actually met by the annual report and the five-year retrospective document that we've put out this year. Now, some suggestions uh, also included, we should have more member-specific events like this one. Uh, provide curated content that could be shared for an internal uh, corporate newsletter. You know, what's going on and that we can have a more com a greater community within each of our member companies and make it easier for people to get involved and contribute. You know, we've been able to make progress on, you know, many of these ideas generated through the discussions, but we still have further to go. Now, on the community needs, uh, there were a wide range of suggestions here. Uh, top of the list, though, seemed to be that we need more enterprise scale support for R. Uh, for example, there's a need to provide guidance on our packages. With the over 18,000 uh, packages on CRAN alone, it can be difficult to know which package should be used for a given task, or what's its quality or its security. Um, as I noted earlier, you know, downloads is one way to estimate a package's uh, quality uh, by consensus uh, of sorts, uh, but there are other measures as well, such as achieving maybe a badge using the Linux Foundation's core infrastructure initiative best practices program. You know, many R packages have already achieved such badges. Now, other feedback emphasized the desire for additional projects involving production development with R. You know, focusing on the need for greater security evaluation, processing sensitive data, code quality, and even further extending code coverage. A working group that uh, I led starting in 2015 with tremendous support from Jim Hester and other members of the working group. There was also consensus on the need for even more focus on performance and scalability uh, in R. So with that, hopefully this you know, gives uh, you know, a few ideas as to you know, what we've uh, heard from the community so far, and we look forward to you know, hearing more uh, right now. So Joe, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, so um, Brian, do we have any questions in the chat? 
We do not at the time. If you do have a question, you can put it in the chat and uh, send it to the host and panelists. All right, then let me um, let me go back and um, mention a few things that um, that I would like to see happen within the consortium. So we have um, we've been talking about our success in the pharmaceutical industry. And I think that's driven by two things. One, pharma members are, um, the biopharma biostatistics community has been using R for a long time. So there is a large user base uh, of people who are either, either using R in their professional day or want to. So there's, there's a kind of coherence there that has, um, been going on long enough for companies to realize that it's in their best interest to collaborate uh, uh, industry-wide. So I think in that sense, the pharma industry is more mature than some other industries who are still heavy R users, but nevertheless, who have not been at least visibly through the R consortium collaborating to, to advance their use of R. So, this, um, this represents an opportunity for us to be more engaged in other industries, um, banking industry, the finance community, the insurance industry, people dealing with sophisticated time series models and what have you, they're all our users. And we really need your help to figure out how to organize and who to contact and, and how to get something going in that industry. So if your company could benefit from that, let us you know, help you make that happen. Um, as we said before, anybody can join a working group and that's the vehicle for collaboration. So if you have an idea for this, we can figure out you know, how to get it going and we can um, see what we can do to organize resources um, to make progress in, in, in a particular area. The other, um, another area that, um, that needs some attention is to establish the, um, the promotion and, uh, of, the, of the R community, we need to take it to an, an, an even greater level. So you can see that we've had a number of successes for reaching out to user groups and, and helping our ladies, but still there's a lot of work that could be done. And you know, the, the R consortium marketing team, as strong as it is, is still just a little marketing team. Um, it would be really nice if we could find synergies with our members marketing team that, that doesn't make a burden on them, but um, enhances perhaps efforts to communicate um, what all of you are doing in areas of diversity. So how can we help you do that? Is there anything that we can directly contribute as a, um, you know, as the consortium, we are... Uh, kind of nonpartisan, we can help you get a message out in a way that perhaps you would not be able to achieve otherwise. And if we could do that, we would certainly want to try to help. All right, um, let's move on to plans for next year. So, What's 2022 going to look like? I hope it's going to mean a growing R consortium that will be able to attract more members from different industries. Um, I am very happy to see that Swiss RE um, joined um, the consortium this year. So, so that is a, a really hopeful sign. So management-wise, uh, we're implementing software to... Um, um, professionalize our grant tracking process. So 
we have an obligation, obviously, as a nonprofit to make sure we account for all of our money. And we want to make sure that our, our grants are um, go to the right people, that they're tracked, that we can do everything we, we can to help make a progress on those projects and to report them accurately. So we're going to implement this new software, which we hope will the payoff benefits in terms of what we can do and also make it easier uh, for, for the R Consortium um, Linux Foundation team to actually um, you know, do the behind the scenes work. We'd like to grow the talent base for the ISC. So the ISC has been doing a tremendous job. Um, over the past five years, it's been in terms of grants more passive than active. Uh, what we do is we go out twice a year with a call for proposals and we pick the best proposals based on criteria that include, um, you know, will it benefit a large segment of the art community? Is the team that's proposing the work or, or do we think they can actually do it? Um, is it um, at a price, a financial support point? That, um, that seems commensurate with the, the end product. So we have criteria, but it's nevertheless been passive. Um, I would like to see us being more um, proactive in the sense of identifying areas that we think are important for the infrastructure. And that's where all of our members have, a, you know, the knowledge is out there with our members. Where is it that you have um, trouble or run into issues in using R in, in, um, to run your business? Now, Mark elaborated on a few things about performance and you know, maybe professional R pipelines of information flows, that kind of thing. So you know, how can we make that concrete? Um, and I'd like to be able to do that. Uh, and then there's uh, technical infrastructure. So we're continuing to work with CRAN and the um, R Core Group and the R Foundation uh, to build areas of um, mutual interest and collaborate where we can. Things are going much better. Uh, for, inch, for example, this year, we are funding a member of the um, of the R core team. So we are actually um, putting money into, um, you know, the, the essential cogs that make the, the R language grow. And that means that that could only have happened um, if we hadn't, you know, because we reached a level of trust and collaboration. Mm -hmm. So um, that's good progress. And we're gonna continue with that. And, um, as I just mentioned, we would like to grow the list of the needed technical projects for the community. And that starts with our members. You have the, you have the say as to what projects are at the, um, what projects are essential for, for increasing the adoption of R in the industry. And that's where we wanna go. Social infrastructure wise, we have this kind of um, um, idea that we could make a virtuous cycle of better integrating some of our programs. So what we have now, for instance, the RUGS group makes um, grants to user groups and conferences around the world. The marketing committee um, also identifies um, conferences that should be um, supported. Uh, and they have a little bit different lens too than the RUGS group. And the RUGS group, we tend to fund things because the community needs it. The marketing committee is a little bit more business oriented in, in, in taking the point of view, well, how is it helping, you know, what tangible benefits uh, do we get uh, for not only the consortium, but for the community from funding particular efforts. And the marketing committee um, amplifies um, the work that the user groups do. So if you look at our webpage um, in, in terms of the um, blogs that, that have been going out, 
rugs will do something they'll they'll give a grant the grant uh, has, leads to user group activity the marketing committee will interview people who are uh, doing that work out there in the field and that'll be we'll promote that um, on our um, social media and blog posts and that will lead to more membership so and this year we want to make sure that the diversity uh, our, our new idea group um, should be in the middle there um, in order to suggest uh, where we may not be reaching uh, um, to help us identify who is doing the important work and get involved in the decision process of how the money and effort should flow. So I see this as kind of a, a tightened up virtuous cycle for, uh, for social infrastructure that gives us a, a better handle on making sure that we can grow and we can do things that are really important. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's about um, it. Um, I wanna end here with a video that was prepared by Prokagia. Um, you can see here the Prokagia, I invited the Prokagia um, to make this because they're a small user. Um, they're a small, relatively small company. And this is a perspective that um, I think is important um, for those of you coming from larger companies, um, yours will be a little bit different, but so please listen to this and then we wanna hear from you too. Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Meher. I'm the CEO and founder of Procogia. We are a consulting work company working across the US and Canada and all things data. We have offices in Vancouver, Toronto, and Seattle, but our consultants are scattered across borders as we embrace the hybrid working world. Procogia drives diversity and inclusion, enjoying the wide range of accents, colors, and cultures we keep. We're also incredibly passionate about leveling up junior talent and offer continued education to help our people grow while providing a realistic and tangible career path they might take. Our technology agnostic approach and push to open source has allowed us to work with a vast portfolio of clients ranging from pharma to telecom, shipping, logistics, media, retail to nonprofit. Essentially, we analyze, dissect, and implement end-to-end -end data projects that support our clients' business needs. Our scope expands across requirement gathering, data engineering, data science, data operations, BI, and bioinformatics. We're also proud to partner with RStudio, AWS, and Snowflake, which ultimately allows us to grow subject matter experts that our clients can tap into. Why Procogia joined the R Consortium? Why are we here? Procogia joined the R Consortium to help support the R community and to promote, develop, and extend the reach of R. R Consortium fulfills unique needs in the data science space and is a critical tool in the data economy. Thanks to our members, like yourself, the R Consortium has been able to make a big impact across the board in the R world, giving grants to infrastructure projects, our repositories, our specialists, our events, and our communities, not just locally, but worldwide. Members help us to ensure the future of our. Thank you. So this brings us to the end um, of what we'd like to um, say today, and we'll end with this question, how you can help. Um, well, by using R and publicly promoting it, it, it just helps everybody. Mm -hmm. And what you can do to promote the R Consortium um, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we spend um, some of our resources you know, on social media, if your marketing teams could pick them up, um, and, and amplify them, or if you could help to suggest how the R Consortium marketing team can amplify something that you're doing in the R world, that would just be better for everybody. Um, 
help us identify potential R consortium members. A after all, this is a voluntary organization and we have the, but the luxury of thinking about who we would like to work with. Who else would you like to see in the R consortium? What, what would be good for your company to have um, you know, a relationship with individuals a working relationship with different individuals from other organizations, other companies that may in fact be competitors. There's an advantage to having this kind of level of communication. So who should we look towards? Who, who should we try to sign up for membership in, in the common good, for the common good of promoting R? Any way you can share your expertise, either by uh, joining one of our committees or working groups or sending us out of the blue memos with you guys ought to be doing that, we'd like that. Uh, you can join the working group, you can join the marketing committee and um, you know, we're looking for people who can roll up their sleeves and think about you know, this is a big world and how to reach it and, and promote, propose a particular project. We, we don't really know, uh, you know, everything that's going on in the minds of our members. And we, we wanna get better at that. We wanna get better at hearing what you have to say. And, um, and we, we would like your guidance. So, so thank you for participating today. Um, is there, um, if anybody would like to uh, say anything before we leave, uh, please now. I would just like to add, you know, thanks to all the folks that I did uh, speak to uh, earlier this year. And I think, as Joe just mentioned, that in the coming year, we'd like to continue to engage with more of the members and have, you know, one on one or one in small group uh, discussions to get your feedback and to factor that into our planning for the years ahead. So thank you all. Brian, are there, are there any other questions or anything in the chat? I've not seen any come through. Thank you. All right, then. Well, then, uh, let me wish you all happy holidays. So um, it's the end of the year. I hope you can all enjoy time with your families safely and, um, and make the best of living through this continuing pandemic. But take care and and um, just happy holidays to you all. Thank you so much.